everybody. This is Rob. It is time for another member talk. And this one's going to be an exciting one. We have Bridget Frost with us, and she is a student at Lake Washington Technical College. I had the honor of speaking there a few weeks ago, and I met Bridget at that time. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. Bridget, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm wonderful. Now, you are in the greater Seattle area, I would assume. You're somewhere close to Lake Washington. I'm up about an hour away. Holy cow, really? Yes. You commute for an hour? Yep. Okay. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Now, Bridget, I wanted to get you on here because I love talking to mortuary students. I really do. I find that mortuary students have some of the best ideas, uh, some of the best conversations. They're usually some of the most forward thinkers. And, and um, you know, when I came out to the school and talked with you guys, uh, it was a lot of fun for me. But really, I wanted to get to know some of the students that were there to see who's going to be actually moving up into this profession uh, within the next year or two. So, it was a, first of all, it was a pleasure to meet you there, but I'm, I'm grateful that you came on board uh, and are part of this, joining the conversation with us on member talks. What, where are you at in the school process? What, are you in the first year or the second year? Um, I'm getting ready to enter the second year. So I'll have summer, uh, fall and winter left. Okay. So how was the first year? It was kind of weird, I imagine. Good. It was guys... weird because of the pandemic, but I, LW Tech and the, my professors made it work really well for us, and I learned a ton. Good. Good. What, what, do you, what are you looking forward to? I mean, obviously, you want to get graduated and, and uh, move out into the profession, but what are you looking forward to? What are you looking to gain? What's your goals? Mm, to be honest, I just want to finish the program and find a really good apprenticeship. Um, I know those are difficult here, especially finding an embalmer willing to uh, take you on in this yeah. state. So my goal is to find one where I can work from start to finish, hopefully. Um, and then uh, as soon as I'm licensed, uh, we plan on moving somewhere in the US. Not sure where, but anywhere. <laughs> anywhere. Okay, well, that's good. That's good. We hear a lot of, a lot of students that say, I want to stay kind of where I'm at. Uh, and, and I'm glad to hear that you're willing to relocate because chances are that's probably what you're going to need to do. There's only so many jobs, so many places, but uh, it's good to hear that you're willing to relocate. Are you wanting to be a funeral director and an embalmer or simply an embalmer or simply a funeral director? Or what's your what's your thoughts there? Um, I'm open to being a funeral director and an embalmer. But to be honest, I prefer just to be an embalmer. Sure. Um, when I first looked at this program, I saw um, some stuff on Google about uh, traveling embalmers, which I thought was pretty interesting, but um, mm -hmm. I'm open to both. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so trade embalmers that we do, we, we, there's a few of those running around uh, for sure that can uh, step in and help out with funeral homes. What, um, so you got, would you say four more quarters roughly? What do you do in the summer quarter? Is that uh, yeah, we have two classes online. Yeah. Okay. And then you have labs as well, don't you, that you do at the school? Yes. Yes. We have um, labs come this fall. We have two labs and then we have one in the winter, I believe. Okay. So for those of us that are watching or listening that have not gone through mortuary school uh, or like me went through mortuary school years and years ago, and most likely everything's changed, which that is to say, except for the restorative art book, I noticed that you guys were still using the same restorative art book I used back in the nineties. So that, that was kind of surprising, but tell us some of the classes. What are some of the classes that you take in mortuary college? Well, you take, um, embalming one, two, and three, you take restorative one and two, you take um, kind of like a history of how embalming and cremation came about. You take, uh, you know, lifespan psychology, chemistry, embalming, um, regular chemistry. Um, and then you have merchandising and uh, ethics. Yeah. 
partners and uh, accounting. <laughs> I'm a little nervous about that one, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, the merchandising class that was the one that I thought was kind of cool. That's something that's been added since I went through a program. We didn't have that opportunity really, uh, other than one or two days where the casket companies brought caskets in and set them up for us to look at. But Lake Washington is unique in the fact that it has a full selection room yes. uh, where you can learn and train and learn how to talk about some of the products that are in there and some of the features that are in there. And it's set up just like it would be in a funeral home. Yep. That's yeah, we great. got to take a view of it our first quarter. It was uh, very fascinating. Oh, so you haven't actually been in it other than that? that. All fall quarter. Okay. Well, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag, but that's a fun one. Nice. <laughs> That'll be awesome. What's been your favorite class so far? Um, I want to say embalming one was my favorite. It really kind of puts you in that atmosphere of what you're going to be going through. Kind of uh, rips the bandaid off. And, um, you know, some people can handle it. Some people can't. And, um, I really learned that I know I'll be fine. So it was kind of an eye opener for me. Now, do you, as a first year student, do you get into the lab and, and get to start the embalming practice or is that um, something you have to wait for? That's not quite yet. I believe we will be doing that in embalming two and three. Um, the first, embalming class was just um, raising vessels and practicing suturing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you were able to do that actually on individuals or is that through book study or how, how'd that work? On individuals. Yeah. Okay. The, Good. So, through LW tax uh, donations. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's a lot of, uh, Boy, there's a lot of future for you. There really is. We've got uh, in the state right now, there's quite a number of, of um, positions that are open. I'd highly recommend that you look at both funeral directing and embalming. Okay. Um, that's where you're going to see the greatest need. Um, unfortunately, Washington's kind of moved into a, a position where 80% of the folks are being cremated. We'll see how things shape up with alkaline hydrolysis and natural organic reduction added to the mix as well. But um, yeah, I think that, I think you'll do just fine if you get into funeral directing as well. Yeah, definitely. What, uh, what are you excited for? Uh, I mean, what classes do you look forward to? Is it the, the second and third level of embalming or is it uh, one of the other courses that you have? Um, I think it's actually all of them. Because um, before this, I went to school for my pre-nursing prerequisites. So I've done a lot of the AMP and microbiology and stuff. Yeah. But um, the rest of the classes we're going to be taking, I've never taken before. So I'm actually pretty interested in all of them. Yeah. Um, this program is just a really big eye-opener, and it's definitely not what I expected. So I'm pretty excited. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. You're sitting there one day and you think, I want to be an embalmer. I want to be a funeral director. How did that come about? Where did that idea come from that said, this is the direction that I want my life to turn to? Um, to be honest, it kind of popped into my head when I was about 16. Uh, my best friend committed suicide. Hmm. And when I saw her at her viewing, I kind of critiqued a bunch of stuff that I didn't feel like looked right. Um, it didn't look natural. She didn't look at peace. And I kind of, you know, was not very happy about it. And then a few years later in college, I read um, an essay called From Behind the Formaldehyde Curtain. Okay. I can't remember who the author was, but it was a really good essay. And again, it popped into my head. Interesting. You know, I could see myself doing that. Sure. And then, um, I don't know, I just got into nursing and was like, I'm going to help people. I was a CNA for a few years. And then I started watching a video on YouTube. I think her name is Miranda and she's a female funeral director in Kentucky. Okay. And my eyes just went wide and 
I Googled funeral directing classes in Washington and LW Tech popped up and I was like, I researched it and I was like, I'm switching. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm going for. This is what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, awesome. Right at, right till I get to the end of a, getting ready to apply to nursing programs. And I'm like, nope, <laughs> I'm switching. <laughs> So what was it uh, in particular that, that you saw in the video that really made you think, you know what, this is where I, this is what I want to do. It was just, I don't know, uh, just another female professional in a, um, in a field that usually I see males. It just kind of empowering to me. And, um, you know, it's also kind of a harder position for a lot of people, male and female, um, to do like every time I someone asks me what I'm going to school for they're like really (laughs) why would you do that (laughs) but it's it's comfortable for me like it felt it feels it feels right and it's just kind of got to follow your calling good good well I'm glad to hear it because uh we need people like you and we need people like the students there at Lake Washington to to really come in and embrace the, the profession um and for that matter, to disrupt the, pers- to, to, can't talk, to disrupt the profession. Yeah. You know, we, funeral service has been sort of stagnant, I guess you could say, for years. There hasn't really been a lot of change, hasn't been a lot of really new innovation. And, and only it's been roughly about the last five years or so that we've seen any kind of real disruption to that. You know, we've seen a lot of We've seen a lot of ideas come out about what to do with cremated remains. Um, and there's a lot of fun ones there. There's a lot of interesting ideas, but really the change in funeral service has kind of been revolving around what are different things that you can do with cremated remains. Now that we're seeing new forms of disposition come out and I'm assuming uh, based off of our conversations in the past and our conversation with, uh, with Jenny Fredrickson and, and Lisa Meehan, you guys are learning firsthand right now. You're, you know, you're learning about these new processes, learning about alkaline hydrolysis and, and natural organic reduction and, and all the other ones that uh, are, are out there. And I understand that you have or you will be uh, taking a, your cremation certification training as well to be able to operate a crematory. I understand that's part of the curriculum now there at Lake Washington. So how cool is that? Come out I with that training. No idea. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Did I let the cat out of the bag? <laughs> yeah, you must have. I had no idea. Yeah. Well, it's my understanding. Don't hold me to it, but it is my understanding that that is part of the curriculum, I think in the second year. Um, so you can come out with that cremation certification or cremation operator certification program, which is a huge benefit and a huge asset as you are opening the door into this profession and, and being able to come out with that already behind you. Absolutely. Um, that's, that's one of those programs or one of those requirements that is new this year that any crematory operator must have that. And it's a $500 course typically. So, you know, good for you guys uh, for getting involved with that. And, um, and if it's not, I, I apologize to me, uh, apologize to Jenny and Lisa for me for saying something incorrect, but I think it is. So. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to do some research because I was going to pay um, out of pocket and do it this summer independently. So. Yeah, I right would wait. wait. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to, you might want to ask them. Yeah, I will. Well, this is awesome. I am, I am just excited for you. I think that, um, you know, you're, you're opening the door up to possibilities that are out there, not just in Washington, but anywhere across the country, you can go and, and you're going to have an opportunity to help people and to serve people in the community that you end up landing in. Um, and so I'm excited for you. I don't normally do this, but I'm going to kind of put you on the spot and ask you the question, do you as a student have any questions for me that I might be able to answer for you? Um, and if you don't, that's, that's good too. I'm, I'm okay with it, but. Right now during the pandemic, what would you recommend on how a student can find an apprenticeship? Like how would you go about it? Ooh, yeah. How would you find it? So 
your best bet is, as you know, a lot of the funeral homes are sort of closed down, I guess you could say, to the public. They are opening more and more up, though, so that's good. But your best bet is to really start calling around. Pick up the, pick up, you know, open up Google and type in funeral homes near me and see who's out there. See where they're at with it. Kind of look at the websites and see which ones you might think would be a good fit for you. Start making those calls. The other thing that I would highly recommend, twice a year we do our district meetings. And so find a district meeting that's in your area. Um, and, you know, what, what actually, I, I know you said you're an hour away from the school. What part of the state are you in? Um, I'm in Puyallup. Puyallup. Okay. So you would be in the Puget Sound region, in the Puget Sound district. And we can connect you with the president of the Puget Sound district so that we can get, get you on the list, the email list of when those district meetings come out. Those okay. are a great way to get your name out there. They're a great, great way to meet um, the decision makers at funeral homes from the management and owners to the funeral directors that are there It'd be a great opportunity for you. Those happen twice a year. Um, also, of course, the convention, this, the annual convention that comes up, that's going to be in August. I know it's somewhat difficult, uh, cause it does have some cost that's associated with it, but if you can make it to that or be a part of that, that's a great way to really meet people. Um, this year we're really fortunate that Cana Cremation Association of North America is hosting their annual uh, international convention in Seattle, downtown Seattle this year. So that's even a great way to uh, get involved and, and get out there. The other thing too, which is a good way to meet people, but I would caution you on it is through social media. There's a lot of people out there on social media that have a lot of good intentions, but you know how that can go. It, it can, you can get into a lot of negativity and that kind of stuff and, and just get a lot of misinformation, but, you know, get involved with the association, um, check, you know, come, come be a part. I know that you, you had asked about becoming a member previous and we do have the student membership, so we'll get you set up with that. But um, that's another great way to, to get out there. We've got job boards that are available. You can go on the, on our website and see who's hiring right now. Um, and, and follow us on the social sites and things like that. So you can see exactly what's happening at all times. That sounds great. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to give that a try. I'm not a big, uh, big social media person. I know my yeah. generation is, but um, I'm more of a face-to-face -face type person. Yeah. So I was actually told that I should just dress professional, take a copy of my resume and walk into funeral homes in my area but because of, you know, everything that's going on right now, I didn't, didn't know if that would be appropriate. You know, that, that is definitely a way to, to do that. The, the hard part with that is you're right. We don't know if they, they'd be open right now. Um, but the other hard part is, is you don't know if you're providing that resume to the person that it needs to get to. Right. Um, and, you know, so that, I would suggest doing it, yes, but I wouldn't put all my eggs in one basket and hope that that's going to be the answer to, to find a position. Um, the other thing, the other drawback to that as well that I've noticed in the past is a lot of times, you know, funeral directors are going every which way they can go uh, trying to get things done for funerals uh, or in the middle of a funeral or, you know, just constantly on the run. So that does, if you time it perfectly, you get an opportunity to sit down with somebody and maybe and, and talk with them, but otherwise you're just leaving a resume with, you know, whoever's answers the door. Right. So it, it, it is good to, to do that. It gets you in the door, it gets you seen. Um, and it also allows you to see the funeral home on the inside. It, you know, you can look at it from the outside and think this is beautiful and then go inside and go, Oh, what happened? <laughs> But uh, you might go in there and just go, I love this place. This is exactly where I want to be. So, yeah, that, that, you know, keep on them, keep calling them and um, find out who the managers are, who the decision makers are. And, and that's who you want to be talking with. Okay. Um, when looking for a funeral you know, home to work for, um, a lot of people go off Google readings. Mm -hmm. Should as a... Um, as someone who wants to work in the industry, should I base my um, 
teacher job off their Google ratings. Because <laughs> I've noticed yeah. there's quite a bit with not so good ratings. <laughs> yeah. Google, some folks might disagree with me on this and, and hear me out, please, before, before you make a, a decision. Google, I think, is a great way to put some faith in what you think the funeral home is going to do. It's, it's a great way to set a benchmark for, you know, this is the type of funeral facility that I want to be a part of based off of their Google rankings. I think the drawback to Google is, although it's been around forever and we've had the opportunity and people have been leaving reviews forever, I don't think all the funeral homes out there have really grasped the concept of needing to have high ranks on Google. I don't think that they've grasp the concept of we need to do what we can to get higher up on the Google listing or to get better reviews. Um, I think, I think that, uh, and this again is just me, it, you know, I, 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 uh, I know something, like I say, some folks might say something different and that's fine too, but I just don't know that a lot of funeral homes or at least all of funeral homes have grasped that concept of we need to make sure we're higher up. We need to make sure we have good ratings uh, you know, a lot of us funeral homes, a lot of funeral homes are still, you know, putting all their advertising into a phone book, into a yellow pages. And it's like, yeah, that's great. You might have really poor reviews on Google and a lot of them, but you, you've got a huge, beautiful ad in the phone book and are people actually seeing it? So, you know, it, it's definitely one of those things that if you're going to be relevant today, you have to as a funeral provider, you have to look at every one of those avenues and focus just as much attention in each one of them for your marketing, for your reviews, that sort of thing. So, yeah, you can use Google reviews as a way to say, you know, I might want to uh, go look at this place or I might not want to. The other thing to think about, too, is read the review for what it is. Um, sometimes it's, you know, you, I've seen reviews on there that has nothing to do with the funeral home, but they didn't have any place to put the review. Uh, it might be maybe a cemetery issue or something like that. Um, but they gave it to the funeral home and now the funeral home loses points or, or lowers their self on, on Google ratings because of a bad funeral or a bad rating that may not have been truly a funeral home rating. Right. For sure. For sure. But yeah, definitely, um, you know, uh, marketing is, is key, um, you know, and that's a, that is a process that for many funeral providers is slow to accept and slow to move forward to. So when I, when I say don't put all your eggs in, a, in one basket, meaning don't judge a funeral home based off just the Google reviews, um, go in and talk to them. That's really a good way. I know you mentioned that before. And, and, you know, once you pinpoint three or four or five places that you think this might be where I'd want to end up, go, go talk to them. I'd call them first though, and make an appointment, but uh, go talk to them and just sit down and maybe get a tour and, and talk with the, the manager, the owner, the funeral directors, hear what they have to say and what they're looking for. Absolutely. Yep. That would be ideal for me sit down, find out what they're about in person, face to face. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, this is fun. I, I have enjoyed our time together. Um, I know you're real busy. Uh, and you've got some stuff that you were talking about earlier there that we won't get too personal with you, but uh, I, I know you've got a lot going on and, and I am just, as I said, excited for you. I want you to feel that you don't need to hesitate to call us. If we can do anything at, from the association level, if we can help you in any way, um, I would encourage you, give me a call anytime. We'd be happy to talk with you. Okay. Also keep in mind, uh, I know we talked a little bit about it when we were there talking with you in your class, but we still do have our scholarship. So check out our scholarship. It's a pretty decent, uh, it's a pretty decent scholarship. That's a pretty decent award. So we'd love to have you apply for it. Um, have you, the recent scholarship application closed, I believe in April or May? 
April? It just closed. Yeah, it just closed. And the reason it closes in April, uh, at the end of April, is part of the award, besides a financial uh, award, part of the award is an invite, an all expense paid invite to attend the state convention. Oh, so wow. we have to we have to cut it off early so that we can get that individual registered, get their family registered, that sort of thing, get them on the list. Um, so we have to make that list early. But we are going to start accepting. Uh, actually, we accept we accept scholarship applications all year long. So okay. you could fill it out now, and we would hold it until the next time we get to looking at at uh, awarding that scholarship. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah. I'll look into that. There you go. Well, we'd love to have you apply for it, and uh, like I say, come join the association. It, it's a lot of fun, and and I'm just grateful that you took some time out of your day to come and talk with us. Uh, like I say, I, I personally love talking to mortuary students. I remember when I was in mortuary school, um, I was so excited. I mean, that was like the best time of my life. So, you know, I, I, I think, uh, I think uh, you guys will do really well. And, and uh, I'm, like I say, I'm, we're excited to see where you go. Okay. I'll uh, see if maybe I can get some of my classmates to reach out to you. Sure. I'm sure yeah. there's a few that wouldn't be uh, that would be willing to uh, uh, chat with you. Yeah, well, we'd love to have them. Bridget, how would we if somebody if somebody says, you know what, I watch this, I listen to it, I can connect with Bridget. I've got some things, uh, you know, I got some conversations that I could have with her, uh, or maybe bounce something off of her. How would we get in touch with you? Do you have an email that you would be willing to share with us? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, Bridget, B-R-I-D-G-E-T dot Frost, F-R-O-S-T at live, L-I-V-E dot com. Sweet. I like it. At live dot com. Live dot com and going to be a funeral director. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's been a pleasure. It really has been a pleasure. I'm glad I got to know you uh, there at the class briefly, but uh, talking with you now has been a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, again, I would encourage you get in touch with us anytime. Uh, if, if there's anything that we at the association can do to help you, um, let me know. And we're, we're here great. to help you. So. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thanks for joining us, Bridget. Thanks for uh, joining in the conversation. And for everybody else out there, thanks for listening. We will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.